Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, welcome. My name is Zoe, but most people know me as ZA Reptiles. And this here is Arcadius, my iguana, who most of you know. Why are you eating my hair? So you guys always love when I do iguana videos, and it's been a while since I did an iguana video. So today's video is going to be 10 reasons iguanas make horrible pets. Now you guys, if you've been here a while, you hear me say all the time that I think a majority of people should not own iguanas. There's a lot that goes into making sure that they live a happy, healthy life, and enough people just don't do that. So, I love Arcadius. He is my child. He is my favorite. If I could only keep one reptile, it would be iguanas. But I think most people should not own iguanas. So we're going to talk about my 10 reasons why iguanas are horrible pets, and then I'll make another video, 10 reasons why I think iguanas make good pets. So the number one reason why I think iguanas make horrible pets is their size. So they get huge, 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 huge. Like they can reach up to six feet in length, huge. They're long, they're heavy. Arcadius here is stunted because he had severe metabolic bone disease. This is about as big as he'll get. So I have a pretty manageable sized iguana, but they get huge and big lizards aren't for everybody. And that will lead me into some of my next points. So reason number two, they make horrible pets going off of size. Oh, thank you. Is that because they are so big, they need a huge enclosure. Not everyone has the room to build these massive enclosures that adult iguanas need. They need about six foot tall by the length of their body by about half their body's length. So a really, really big iguana enclosure. And that's just the minimum size requirements. So not everyone has the money to build this or the space to build this. So they get these cute little iguanas and then once it grows big enough, they get rid of it and you don't want to do that. If you get an animal like an iguana, it's gonna, you want to be committed for life to it because they're very social animals. They create an attachment to their owners. You don't want to just throw it away the minute it gets too big for you. So the next reason they make coral pets is their nails. So if you look at Arcadius, he's got very sharp nails that are ripping up my hand right now. So they have these sharp nails so that they can climb really well. If you notice, I'm wearing a sweatshirt I was wearing a nice thin top to go work out in, but because I'm handling him, I had to change. These nails are super, super, super sharp. They can really do some damage. They really hurt. Now, you can also stay on top of these and trim their nails. I do trim and file Arcadius's nails from time to time. I haven't in a little while, which is why they're so painful right now. But it's just another thing that you have to be on top of if you are an iguana owner. So kind of going back to cost, the next reason they make horrible pets is it can be costly to light their enclosures. These guys, they need really good care. And so this means they need basking lights, they need high quality UVB lights, and at their size, when they get to adult size, they need more than one light to be able to cover their entire body. So electricity and buying all of these really expensive lights can rank up your uh, your bills pretty fast. Now, the next reason, which kind of still goes along with price, is what they eat. So they eat fresh produce. They are strictly vegetarians. So it can be very costly to feed them. For me, it's not that bad because I don't have to go shopping too often. He eats a decent amount. Between him, Tansy, and Chalupa, they split some greens. It lasts me a week or two. Not really two, they would go bad by then. But it lasts me quite a while. An adult iguana eats a lot. Like one of those heads of greens that you can go to the store and buy. Sometimes, depending on the iguana, they'll eat a whole one of those in one sitting. So it can be really, really costly to keep buying all this fresh produce for your iguanas all the time. Another reason they don't make very great pets is because they require a high humidity. They do come from a tropical region, which also goes along with the lights. They need really high heat, hence all the lights but they also need really high humidity because they come from a tropical region. So it can be kind of tough to keep up that humidity for them in their enclosures. If you don't keep up with it, you can lead to illnesses such as a respiratory infection. The next reason I don't think they make very good pets 
has to do more with the females and with medical bills. So it's very common for female reptiles to become egg bound. If they're not able to pass the eggs, they get bound up and you have to take them to an exotic vet and they typically will have to have surgery done to remove the eggs so that the animal can survive. And this is very, very costly and I see it happen all the time in female iguanas. So if you get a female iguana, it's likely that at some point you're gonna have to deal with them becoming egg bound. Now maybe you'll get lucky, maybe you don't have to deal with it, but I see it happen all the time in all the Facebook groups and all the research I've done. You hear about it all the time. That's my hair you're eating. So we thought Arcadius was a girl when we got him. His name was Arcadia. Some of you may remember that if you were here at the beginning. And we were so grateful when we found out that he was actually a boy because I was so worried about the day that he would try to lay eggs with his metabolic bone disease and all his spinal deformities. I was so worried about that. So the next reason they don't make great pets for a lot of people is because they can live up into their 20s. They can live a very long time and that's a long time to be committed to a five to six foot long lizard. Now going off of that kind of reversing a little bit, a lot of them in captivity don't make it past their first year of life because there's so much that goes into their care that people just don't do right. So a lot of them in captivity don't live past the first year of life. So their age makes them a horrible pet. They either live a very long time or they can't even get past a year of life because they're so difficult to take care of. Now the last two reasons I think they make horrible pets, I say for last because I think they are the most important reasons that you shouldn't keep them as pets and they're the ones you probably were expecting me to say. So the first one is their temperament. So number nine, temperament. This is the one that you always hear about. Iguanas can be nasty and they certainly can. Each iguana has their own personality. Arcadius here, he's a little angel, right? He loves everybody. He's a social butterfly. I'm waiting for him to jump off my arm. So I got very lucky. It really took nothing to get Arcadius used to me. But I see a lot of people talk about how their iguanas hate them. I have a lot of people message me all the time. How did I get Arcadius to be so tame? I just got really lucky with him. A lot of people don't get so lucky. A lot of iguanas are nasty or they just they aren't trusting and you have to build trust with them. You have to earn their trust and it can take not very long at all like me and Arcadius. It can take months. It can take years. It may never happen and that's something that a lot of people don't quite understand is each iguana has its own personality and it may be very trusting and it may decide that it never wants to trust you. Now the other thing that makes them really difficult is you can have a trusting iguana. You can have an iguana that is a complete angel. You absolutely love it to death. It loves everybody. Come breeding season, that iguana can turn into an absolute monster. You won't even know it's the same iguana. So luckily, Arcadius during breeding season doesn't get nasty. He just gets super crazy. And I can't just like calmly hold him like this or anything. He has to be constantly all over the place. But he doesn't get mean. And a lot of iguanas, especially male iguanas during breeding season, will get mean and they'll get nasty. They can be the sweetest iguana ever, but breeding season completely changes them. And a lot of people aren't prepared for that. It can be scary. It can be really dangerous if you don't know how to handle your iguana during that time. So that's another reason they make a bad pet is just their temperament and how quickly they can change their temperament to something you're not expecting. Oh my God, my arm's getting tired. Yep. Okay, we'll go back in. Try to keep him from jumping because of his issues. He's also really full right now and I need to go poop him. Just finished eating. All right, so the very, very, very last reason, number 10 on the list of why I think iguanas make horrible pets is because the amount of research you have to do. There's, they always say, I always say, everyone always says, research before you get an animal so that you know how to take care of the animal before you get it. And that's right, you should always research before you get an animal. But with iguanas, you really get research. A lot of other animals are forgiving. You know, you can do the basic research and then you keep learning from there. It's a learning process. You don't have too much of a learning process with iguanas. You have to get it right. They are, 
there's so many things that can go wrong. And metabolic bone disease is like a huge one. That's one that we see all the time in iguanas because things weren't done right. A lot of people know they need UVB, but they don't get the right UVB. It needs to be the right UVB. It needs to be really hot. It needs to be humid. There are so many things that have to be right with an iguana's care to help them live past that first year of life. And unfortunately, enough people don't do the complete total research and that's why they don't live past that first year of life. There's no really, there's not much wiggle room when it comes to caring for an iguana. You have to like go above and beyond your research before you get that iguana. You have to know what you're doing and have all your questions answered before that iguana comes into your care. Otherwise you're gonna have a slew of health concerns and issues and iguanas are very good at hiding things so you usually don't know until it's too late that they have these issues. So they're costly, they can have a bad attitude, and their attitude can change on a dime. They need a huge enclosure, you need to do all the research in the world, they have very sharp nails. My hand is like, I don't know if you can see it, but it's all scratched up right now from me holding him in my hand. Why is that? Why is my hand white? There we go. So yeah, those are 10 reasons I think iguanas make horrible pets and why people should not have iguanas. Like I said though, I will be making a list as to why I think iguanas make good pets because I'd be a hypocrite if I didn't because I absolutely love Arcadius. But I always tell people not to get iguanas. So I had to make this video first, but now I'll make the video why I think people should have iguanas. Well, not why people should have iguanas. Why I think iguanas make good pets for the right people. There we go. That's what I wanted to say. So thank you guys for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you learned something or you agree or something along those lines. Just give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button over here, over here. I don't remember which side it's on, but hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss the next video and so you can see all my other animals and see Arcadius again. And yeah, so thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.